you're looking for a way to make your iBook a little bit different to everybody else's, or perhaps there's something you want your iBook to do but you can't work out how to get iBooks author to do it, then you should check out bookery.com. Bookery.com allows you to create widgets to go into your iBook and you create them here on the website and download them. Many of them interact with the website which means that they can send data back to the website or through to you as the teacher, which is pretty cool. Now, when you first sign up for an account here, the first thing you'll need to do is to actually start a book in which you can create all of the widgets um, for the book that you're making. So you can think of it, I guess, like a folder that you're keeping all of your files in if that's easier to you. So I'm going to call this one the Alicia Keen book. And you'll see that there, uh, there are lots and lots of different widgets available. There aren't any in here yet, so I'm going to click on Author Tools and go down to Widget, widget Library. And this video would be far too long if I went through and showed you every single one that I think is useful for music education. I would say probably at least half of them are. But let me just point out a few that um, I think are useful and I'll give a demonstration of a couple. Firstly, I should mention that some of them definitely are going to work best uh, or will only work with an internet connection. So for instance, the browser which you can see here is useful if you don't want to actually create a link to a website um, from within your book and send people out to Safari. They can actually stay within your book and look at a web page. However, you might find that once they click on a few links within the web page that it sends them out to Safari anyway. So my argument would be to, it, you need to think about what information you need online. Similarly, there are other things in here like the SoundCloud widget. Now, I would much rather just um, embed the uh, audio file itself, as we've already seen is very easy to do, than use the SoundCloud widget, unless you specifically uh, don't have permission to uh, include the music, but it's available on SoundCloud, or that you want to use some of the social media aspects of SoundCloud. But again, remember that if they don't have an internet connection, they won't be able to use that. The first one of use to us in the list here, probably, is the checklist. Now, of course, we already looked at how we can use, uh, when we're in iBooks Author, how we can go into widgets and use the review options for seeing whether students have actually uh, learned what they need to learn. But sometimes you might have provided them with a scaffolding for creating a song, and you just need them to check off each stage as they do it. So to start doing this, I'm going to click on Download this widget, which actually uh, sets me into customizing it. I'm going to choose my Alicia Keen book, and I'm just going to imagine that I've given them some kind of uh, composition task, composition task, and it's got a bunch of stages that I'm expecting them to go through. Now we already know there are important things like which way our iBook author is around, so I'll leave you to explore that and you can customize these widgets with background images and things like that. But for now, what we really want to do is we just need to know um, what's going to go in our list. So you can see down here we've got checklist list, list title, list subtitle, list intro, and then um, a whole uh, bunch of different styling options. So I'm going to call this um, uh, composition task again, just like the widget is called, and I'm going to call this steps to complete. Okay, now the intro. Uh, there are a number of steps to complete. Um, uh, please check each off as you go. Okay, so now you can see here this uh, is checklist unchecked styling and checklist check styling. So that's just showing you once they've checked it, they've given it a tick, um, that that's what it's going to, um, that's what it will look like. So it's going to get crossed out as they do it. Okay, the next thing that I need to do is I need to actually put some things into the list. And you can see here, again, I'll just change that to composition task, composition task. Uh, you can see here that there are examples for exactly what uh, your checklist should look like. So you can have sub steps um, to the tasks that they need to do. So for instance, um, if I write write lyrics, then that might seem, well, okay, that's you know, that's a straightforward enough thing to do, but students might need that breaking down into shorter uh, shorter steps. So for instance, uh, choose uh, a subject, uh, think about the, whoops, about the story 
um, uh, make sure the rhythm is consistent, rhyming, so on and so forth. Uh, I can't spell rhyming. Rhymes. Um, and then um, th whatever the next thing in the list might be, uh, choose your chords. And we might have uh, write a bass line, improvise a melody, record several drafts, so on and so forth. So there we go. I've got a list there uh, now with some subheadings here. And I'm going to go down and click save and once I've clicked save and saved it then the download button will be available if I just wait and click download lovely now you'll see here as soon as it's downloaded it says do I want to install it that's actually going to install it on my Mac which isn't what I want at all in actual fact what I want to do is to go back into my iBooks author and to find a blank page and to pull the checklist into there so I'm just going to drag that into here. Again, it's going to have the usual NAF um, formatting that this particular template has, but I'll just leave it as it is. And we'll come and have a look at that in a second, but just bear that in mind for now. I'm going to go back to the website because I want us to create a couple of uh, different widgets here. So that one is saved. I'm now going to go back to Author Tools and Widget Library. And we'll see here, checklist is what we just did. Drag and drop, that's a really useful one. And another thing that might be good for younger students here, if you're doing uh, younger students, I'll give you just a quick example of how this could work. Props, not, nothing to do with the Alicia Keen one, but I've got an example here. I'm just going to call it Instruments of the Orchestra. And I'll save that very quickly. And again, I'm going to go down here. I could change the cover image. I'm not so worried about that. That's a startup image. But an important one, stage background. So thinking about this from a music education point of view, here's an orchestral layout that I've uploaded earlier. And um, I will just put it onto the background. And this is going to be for, I'm going to ask students to drag instruments onto the stage. So this has already got the layout for them. I'm not testing them on that, but I'm just interested to see whether they actually know what clarinets and bassoons look like. Uh, fill the background um, with this image. That should be absolutely fine. And then I will choose upload items to drag and drop. So we'll now just go into my instruments folder. Again, a bunch of uh, royalty-free images, so I'll just upload all of those. Um, uh, they're quite small images, so it shouldn't take too long to do. And again, we've now got, uh, there we go, a whole bunch of different instruments. Now, normally you'd go through and put these into categories. You could put them into strings, woodwind, brass, or you could just say um, instruments all together. I'm just pointing that out because you'll see a slight uh, strangeness about the um, widget because I'm not going to do that right now to save time. So again, I'll just save it as it is and I will click download and that will download my widget and offer to open it again and I'll just copy it onto the desktop so it's ready to go cancel or I'll just copy it into iBooks author in fact. So here we go, put that up on that same page. Lovely. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, just go back to the website now and have a look at a few of the other widgets, just talk about them um, quickly. So we've just done a drag and drop. A similar one is drag and match. So for instance, match two, um, match two violins together, match two, so on and so forth. Feedback is a useful one, allows um, students to send you an email um, through uh, there through the iBook. Obviously they need an internet connection with that and that's really only uh, partially as exciting as Form Builder is. Now we do actually have in here, if I go down further, we do have something, if I can find it, called the Quiz Builder. Here it is, which allows very quick uh, building of quizzes and actually allows also students and teachers to interact online together. But I found even more useful than Quiz Builder is the Form Builder and I'm not going to take you the whole way through building a form right now, but basically the story with this one is that, as you'll see in a second, 
You could use this as a quiz because at the end, here we go, live settings, at the end I can say, okay, I want to be emailed each form as a PDF or as a CSV attachment, and that's going to come to my email address, which means that I can then actually collate all of the student work as they do it. Down here in the form builder, uh, in the form builder I can go into things like layout and give it a title. I'll call it something like uh, end of song exam. Or in fact you don't need to use it for tests and things. You could use it, uh, I'll give you an example, as a place where you might ask students to reflect. So here's a, I think a really useful process. At the end of each stage perhaps you could say reflect on your, whoops, on your process. Um, and we'll just call this uh, process one because if you had week after week of how they were going with their composition or something you might want several different uh, process fields and then I'm gonna have a placeholder um, what did you do this week what went well uh, what can you do better next time so I write those kind of things just to prompt students exactly what they need to write. And you can see here now that they could actually um, do that inside, uh, inside this little box. Last but not least, um, you can, if you want to do more test-like things, you can do that with radio buttons. So let's say, um, uh, I don't know, exam question five. Just to be extreme, uh, hello, uh, how much is that doggy in the window. Oh, I've put that in the help block. Oh, well, that'll do. This isn't uh, exactly the right way to do this, but I'm just going to go down here uh, and put in a few different answers and then click done. So you can see here now they can click those. So again, once you finish doing that, it's just a matter of first saving it. Oh, I haven't added a submit button. That's good that it reminds me to do that because I didn't do that last time either. You add a submit button as well. That's under this um, little uh, tab here where it says buttons. And then download it. As I mentioned before, I've already done a very simple uh, one anyway that's ready to go. Okay, so just before we actually go and look at some of these in iBooks Author, let's just quickly go back through the uh, list here and mention a few others that might be useful. iTunes Music, again, you really need to have a website, but that's extremely, uh, sorry, an internet connection, but that's extremely useful if you want, if you've, if you've got music, commercial music you want to include in your book, um, but you uh, obviously don't have access to that commercial music. So the student can actually, within uh, the book, uh, go and uh, buy it, which is useful. Uh, then we've got a notepad for making notes, which you can actually do in iBooks anyway. Um, Office document viewer, there's also a PDF document viewer. I, I personally find it easier to um, do the, the trick that we showed before, which is exporting a PDF, Sibelius files, so on and so forth as images and then putting them in the gallery. But you can, if you want to, drag Office and PDF documents into these widgets and have them open. I've mentioned the quiz builder. And uh, finally, probably the RSS reader is also cool, but again, requires a, a um, an internet connection. The only other thing I think that's worth mentioning here, oh, there's a YouTube and a Vimeo uh, widget. Uh, but the only other thing I wanted to mention while I was here is if you go back to the homepage at Bookery, just for interest's sake, you can see actually uh, what's coming up further down the page. Uh, there's a list uh, somewhere on here about upcoming um, uh, iBook author widgets, so ones they're actually testing or creating at the moment, which is really cool. And uh, you might be able to find something new that no one else has used in theirs yet. Okay, so I'm going to go back to iBooks author and just hopefully very quickly have a look at what this uh, looks like. I've also got my um, iPad and iBooks ready to go. Let's see if this is actually going. Here we go. So I've already dragged in those two. Uh, I've got a few others that I dragged in earlier. Uh, oh, sorry, that I created earlier. So I've done the uh, form building one here. I'll just put that in there and I'll just make sure that that's clear. We'll call it form building. We could perhaps call this a uh, difficult exam or reflections. Sorry, not very clear typing there. Uh, this is the uh, iTunes widget that I mentioned before. Um, so I could just say access the music. And um, 
Last but not least, uh, I've already done a checklist one, so that's already in there. So what we'll do now is we'll send it into the uh, iBook itself. I've clicked Preview, so that's going to send it to my iPad, and I'll just drag the feed from my iPad over here so that we can look at it as it um, as it comes up. You can see it's connecting as we speak, and hopefully. Here we go. So um, just reviewing what we did, if I go through to the right page, it's going to open up, yes, already on the one that we, we did earlier. So I think I started off with the checklist. Just wait till the preview thing's gone. Tap on the checklist and you'll see now that I've got the different steps that I had here, including uh, sub steps in there and the ability to check them off as they go. You can see what I mean by the uh, the crossed off style here, that's what it was allowing us to remember. By the way, uh, this will be remembered in the book, but obviously if you share your iPads between a bunch of students, they'll need to save their work, which they can do easily by tapping just there. And you can see here it already knows my email address. They, It's a very easy account to sign up for. They can put in their school internet, uh, their email address, and immediately save their progress into the cloud and then load it back down. So if they get a different iPad later, it won't matter. Here's the interactive that I created um, with the instruments of the orchestra. You can see the plan of the orchestra there. Could be sized a little bit better, but it's not too bad. And I, I mentioned before that I hadn't put them in category, so it might look a bit funny. But if I just tap on that black bar at the top there, you can see all of my instruments appear. And you don't actually drag them from there. You just tap them once and they appear on the picture. And then you go and put them in the right place. Uh, if they don't quite fit, of course, it's an iBook, so they can be squizzed around. You can make them bigger or smaller as you see fit, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, that can uh, very easily be used. And I think that that's quite a fun visual thing if you can think of useful ways to, to use it. Of course, uh, if, you, um, if you were teaching cross-curricular, it's also something that would work extremely well for um, images. Um, you know, For instance, if you were doing a jungle topic and jungle music, but you wanted students to build their own jungle, then you could put a nice jungle background and have a, a menu there and uh, drag different, instrument, uh, different uh, animals into the jungle, um, have them work any way you uh, like, uh, put anywhere on the particular screen or, or flat at the bottom as you see fit. And finally, um, the other uh, things that, that I put in, access the music, as I said, that's the iTunes uh, plugin. So there that's got a full track. They can be previewed from within the app. Um, and then downloaded directly into the iTunes collection. Obviously an iTunes account is needed to purchase it. And also the form building. So this isn't the form that I was making, it's just an earlier one that I did. In fact, it's remembered the answers from when I did it. But you can see there that I've actually got space for typing into. This might be for a reflection thing here, so they can type into that. And once they click Submit, um, that then gets sent to me as an email. And I've even saved the email that I sent myself earlier on. So this is the email I received from my student, my pretend student, who's me of course. And if I just quickly go and have a look here you can see there it is as a PDF. There are the answers that I sent and here it is as a CSV which I'm just previewing now but obviously you could open that in a program like Excel or Numbers and actually then copy and paste your students all into a spreadsheet together. So that's a great way of actually gathering um, feedback there. So if you're interested in making your iBook really incredibly interactive and uh, very different to everyone else's, then you should definitely check out bookery.com.